probably want to do this to me. Jenny doesn't get washed away and us with it. Oh. Yeah, because you've got all that stuff down underneath the jetty, haven't you? You know those things you can walk on underneath the jetty. It's all under I don't really know what to make of that mob. What? That guy has the hat. That guy has a hat that oh, looks yeah, just like. Oh yeah, it is a bit like that one, isn't it? Yours. This is Floyd. This must have been the old Port Mac. Look at her. If I can get that car there, <laughs> and it was all just. When you look at that, that was just gravel road. Gravel? Now you go and look at this, and it's yeah, so well, at least it's concrete. It hasn't really changed much. This old joint. I guarantee you one thing will never change here, Floyd. That's the weather. It's cold for most of the year. But anyway, Lighthouse and Cottage Report, we're doing 906. And you got the fishing boat at the end of Port Donald Jetty in 1890. Yeah, that's a fair while ago, 1890. It doesn't look like it's 1890. Sure, that photo was taken in 1890. It seems too clear. That building's still in the background, which if I swing it over here, that one there is still there. And then you got the full shore and esplanade with view with, ch with children swimming in the shallows, 1930. And it's the same thing, look at the old cars, would you? I love the cars here. Yeah, it's 
side of the Victoria Co 894. Serious trouble.
little black pieces. What it's what it's for. This is still in the you now lofty ranges. Let's see if I've seen it. See if it says anything what it was originally, just a hex now. Band of hands. Hmm. Not really a hell of a lot to see. Three rooms. A bit of strange, huh? Strange place to have an abandoned house. I'll see if I can just from this house, I'll see if I can zoom in. Let's see if you can see it there. It's Adelaide in there, three D. I don't know if you can see that, probably. Maybe I don't know. Mm, that's Adelaide through there. <laughs> and here we are. In the bush. In the abandoned house. Yeah. Amongst all these trees. Beautiful trees. Smell nice. Gum trees. Mm. A nice natural smell, beautiful. But yeah, remember that it was used for something once. Seem to be any signs to say what the river was, but I think I already said that. Just got a burn sort. Useless bit of information. There's the city, so I'm going to try and get it through here. Just try and get in. There it is, there. That satellite through there. Oh, I'll go back. Probably head back to Glenelg, I suppose. Puffing, puffing now. You're all white. Just want to hold the rocks together. Whew. Yes. Take another photo.
I don't know how yeah, that works. You have to pay six bucks, but I don't know where. Mm. This is the Truman windmill. This windmill was likely made by George Edward Truman. Born 1867 in Mangum, which was an ironwork and was pressed into the wheelwright trade. He launched his own business in Grey Street, Mangum, in 1888, age 20. Oh uh, yeah, he soon taken orders for windmills and by 1898 purchased the Mount Gambit Iron and Brass fan. Mm, geez, yeah, he is. He must be pretty proud of that. This windmill was located... Oh yeah, so it's other... It's just that one. I can't even get... That one. 1867. It's amazing, isn't it? This thing. So long ago. <coughs> so this is Clanco bullshit. This MT eighteen seventy one, eighteen seventy two. What that is? This is nineteen thirty three. This one, WM, 1871. 1935. What's that? Is that 1908? I'm not sure. Pretty old anything. Pretty old date. Ooh. Hello? Hello? This is weird. There's no one here, but I can hear someone. I can hear them talking, but I can't see them. Yeah, this is the old woolshed. The ghost, you can hear the ghost clearly of the old woolshed. Still stinks a bit in here. It actually smells like shit. Wonder when the last time they used this was. The old lamp up there. Yeah, got to pull them through here. Or push them out. One or the other. Hmm. Pretty big. The old beams and stuff up here. Can't really see any other markings. When you think of how how long ago it actually was they would have done this here's it. And they are there. Tom Rob was born in Great Britain, 1851. Shearing the Rams, 1888 to 90. Oh, I'll get it closer. These are the old wool bales. Stone. Oh, grinding stone. How did they? And then I wonder. Oh, there's a handle there. There's the handle. Someone on the handle winding it. You can imagine these. 
these floorboards and things, just how long they've been here. Look at that. Massive doors. And what were these things useful? Well pressed. Oh, yeah, yeah. 18, yeah. Get up close again. Oh, yeah, 96, no, no idea. Yeah. An old amount, so I'm only six. Oh, yes, it's your wall proof. That's what it is. I still got the wall in here. Mm. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, Ratchet type thing, I'm guessing. Yeah, this one's an old one too. Look at that. <clears throat> you see the beams and stuff, just how old they Well, you know, why they used to do things. Look at that. So get up there a little bit. Oh, see that? I didn't know, even know you could do that. I'm just going to... Right, they finally shut up over there. Donaldson... No, Ronaldson Tippett Ballarat. Ronaldson Tippett Ballarat. So that's another wall press. Stick the wall in there somewhere. Wander in. Push it in. Oh, uh, yeah, that comes down and bang, bang, and pushes the wall in. Yep, yeah. a big sprocket there. There's a change on that one. Yeah. These walls could speak, eh? Well, they are speaking at the moment, come to think of it. The bell was originally a ship bell from a 296 ton wooden bark. The soil fight built in Bremen, Germany in 1852. It was registered in Melbourne and used as a coastal cargo vision. 277 ship from Portland Bay to Sydney that collided with Bolina, a steel frame paddle stem. It's off DY head and sank. All hands were rescued in the cargo. And the bell salvaged. I know from oh yeah, how the bell ended up in the wall shed is a mystery. It was most likely installed by the Lindsay family who leased Glencoe's station in 1868. Samuel John Lindsay was a ship's captain. Here's Samuel Lux, standing looking gentleman. Oh, yeah, it was common practice to ship's bell for all should sound the start and end of shearing days and to signal meals and smoko times. So where is the bell? I haven't actually seen the bell yet. I'm going to look for the bell. These, the supporting posts are pit sawn blackwood timber, the arched timber being hand adzed. Oh yeah, and timber jets were fitted on the ground and marked with Roman numerals so that Send me the number, the timber they are placed in their two position. Where's the Roman numeral? Oh, yeah. Roman numeral? Oh, yeah. Send the wall down in there to be pressed. You can't really see much. Of it. Here they are. Now, sheer, isn't it?
sheds. And flick through that book. If you're into wool sheds. She was cool. Cowboy. Shit, I think. Man, eh, can't really see much up there. Hotel. What's that on there? 
licensed ho hotel on the Overland track. 1st of April, 1852 to 31st of December, 1873. Uh, gutted by fire, 26th of February, 1856, and rebuilt. Yeah, you're right. So this is where there used to be a hotel here. The Mount Burr Bush Inn was here. Now, there's not much here now, is there, for... No. What's that over Where's here? Where's the monument? Mm -hmm. uh, no, that is the monument. I don't know what this is. This must be part of it, see? Look at, here. Look at those bugs, later bugs. Yeah, I'm going to push it over. Yeah. I'll tell you what, though. You know what you want? Metal detector. Come out here and don't. You know, someone's probably left that there for people to see it or something. Part of it, you know? Come out with a metal detector, Floyd. Be interesting, wouldn't it? You might find a, eh? Yeah, you might find a um, like some coins, old coins or something. You still got that metal thing? I took that out for it of the car. There, yeah, so that's the the inn. Oh, yeah, on the Overland Track, 1852 to 1873. His life on this spot when fighting the Kong Arong fire, fire on January 17th, 1959. This is the monument to it. Mm, all right, he lost his life on the in this spot, which is sort of like it's the middle of nowhere, really. There's an old there's a dairy over there. Pick that dairy up. 
Yeah, on day shift, they're on day shift now. I'm not on day shift anymore, so I don't come to This is um, folklore and facts of Earl's Caves. This is Earl's Cave. There, to exclamation, the first is that it was named after a previous landowner. Or as folklore would have it, it was named after a ranger. This ranger impounded some stock, infuriating the owner who stole the ranger's horse team and wagon. In a rage, he ran him into the small cave to never be seen again. So there, during 1959, the southeast had a very destructive bushfire that killed a lot of livestock and destroyed many paddock fences. But the sick of the area had, area had the burnt remains dumped in them. Oh, yeah. As folk would have it, the majority of the burnt fencing wire just sank and disappeared. The remaining rubbish was scraped out by a bulldozer when the sinkhole was quarried to provide rubble for the local roads. You can't really read that because it's half in shape. But... And then if you go over here, this is Earl's Cave here, under your feet there is a cave as large as your house. The cave was part of a shallow sea. 30 million years ago in this area, it was covered by a shallow sea over time, decaying shells and skeletons formed the limestone that became the sea floor. If you can hear closer, you can hear the cows mooing really loud. Yeah, I can hear them over there. There's a bit of wind blowing around. Yeah, so, but that, this one here, as it says there, uh, where did it mention that? Oh, during 1959, the yeah, it had a very destructive bushfire that killed a lot of livestock and paddock fences. So that's where we just come from that monument, which was way over, oh, well, not way over there, but that's the farm. Just zoom in on that farm. The sun's right in my eyes. That's the farm way up the back there. <laughs> See it. There it is, there's the farm. And that's where we were, where that monument, where that bloke was killed. So. But at the moment, this is where we are. We'll go and have a, I'll just have a look at the, this cave. And get over here. Wind's a bit strong. I haven't got more suppressor or anything. We only just got the car back and it's been out of action for a long time. But um, we were lucky because it came in at a very cheap, cheap rebuild of the transmission. It was seven. Eight thousand bucks, and we're too lucky. Yeah, let's see if I can get in here. It's a rough. Yeah. Now, this is the. Right, I'm trying to see where my feet go because if that if I fell, that would be good morning, Irene. I wouldn't like to be falling down in there. I'll just see. Oh, that's useless. That's the game. Where they threw all the fences and stuff, and after the fire, it just all disappeared down there. <laughs> Probably went out to sea. You can't really see much. See it there, maybe. It's a bit better view. Yeah. If you fell in there, could you get out? Oh, you p yeah, no, you could. You could pull on those. Yeah, yet another sinkhole oh, just trying to get out of here. Yeah. There's, here. There's a good one out the road, but you've got to book, make a booking to get into sea with you. Oh, yeah. There's a hole, right? You fell in there, my friend. Come here, have a look, do not get too close to the edge. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, you fell in 